All right, in this video, I'm going to go over how to do a single frequency AC sweep in multi-sim. I currently have a LRC circuit here built using a function generator. Got it set for 10 kilohertz and a 4 volt peak uh, amplitude. And for this, I am going to get all the voltages on each component along with their phase angles, the current, and the power draw. So this is how it's going to work. So you come up here to the interactive, and instead of using interactive, we're going to come here to single AC frequency. And as you can see, you can select the frequency. If I hit auto detect, it's not going to like it. So because I'm not using something that it can detect. So I'm just going to manually put in the value at 10 kilohertz. The output. If I want to see the frequency, I can have that in there as well. But I, the format's either going to be real or imaginary, or magnitude and phase angle. I'm going to choose magnitude and phase angle because I want to see the phase angles. We move to options, and we are presented with the variables in the circuit. So you can see that I have current, power, and voltages. Now understand the voltages here do not correspond with the actual devices. They correspond with the nodes that I have labeled here, E, L, and C. So since this is a series circuit, the current is going to be the same. So we're just going to drop that in. Just to prove this. It's going to give me the power for all three components. And obviously C is going to be the, the voltage of the capacitor. Now to get the voltage for the inductor and the resistor, I'm going to have to do a little bit of math. To do that, I'm going to use the add expression tool. And that pops up. And for the inductor, it's going to be the voltage at L minus the voltage at C. So VL minus VC. All right, and I will do the same for VR. So that's E minus VL. Now, this is going to give me peak values. If I wanted to let this do the number for peak to peak, we know that peak to peak is two times peak. All I have to do is edit the expression. You can see the recent expressions that I used. So I'm just going to type in two times. Open parentheses and I'm going to select the expression I was using. I'm going to hit enter and now you can see that it's there. So I'm just going to keep it at everything with peak so I know what's going on. Now the problem that I'm going to run into is that if I want to get the power for the entire circuit, I can do this one of two ways. I can either just add up all the powers, or I can put a power probe in here. So what I'm going to do is because I don't have a device that I can actually put a power probe, you can't probe the actual function generator, I'm going to add my three powers together. So, power, and power, and power. All right, let's let this run. And this is what I'm presented with. You can see the different equation, the different things, and their powers. Now, if I don't want to have all these numbers out to the end, because I really don't care if the VL minus VC, which is the inductor, is 133.92704, I want to trim that up. What I can do is I can go into 
nope, not page properties. I go, it is a properties. So instead of doing edit page properties, I'm just clicking on the cells and doing properties. And you can see here the different variables, what type of data it is, and the precision. To change the precision, you can just select it. And I really only care, I'll put that at 3. We'll put the magnitude at 3. Hit apply. And you can see it automatically applies it. Make it a little easier to view. And I can drag this. You can't just auto click it to make it go. And you can shrink down the columns width. If I hit, let's see, where was it? You can look through these if you want. But I can export to Excel. And you can see it, come, it comes into Excel, where I can manipulate the data. So if I don't like this super long formula for total power, I can just come in here and power total. Make it nice and pretty. Shrink that down. And let's see, VL minus VC was VL. E minus L was R. And just so that we keep with formats. Just come in here and change these values. And as I said, as you can see here, proof that the current doesn't change. So I'm just going to delete those two cells. Now, these are in whole unit numbers. So if you wanted to convert these into like uh, milliwatts for the power and milliamps for the current. You just do the basic math, you know, move it over three decimals. And then you make sure that you put the corresponding symbol on it. But this is getting into how do I work with Excel? And that's the basics of how this works.